she's being removed. The reason she's being removed is because she is an unpopular president. The economy of Brazil is weak and is a lot of people are suffering because of it. And as you indicated earlier in the opening uh, package, the party to which she belongs, the Workers' Party, has been in power for 13 years. And the reason they've been in power for 13 years is because they've won four consecutive national elections. And there is no way that the opposition, which is composed of oligarchs and business interests and media barons and conservatives and uber-nationalists, this opposition faction has concluded that they are incapable of defeating this party in the ballot box, meaning within the democratic process. And so they are opportunistically using her unpopularity and the serious mistakes she's made to remove her undemocratically. And I think the most important thing to realize about this process Brazilian media elites, who are almost uniformly behind impeachment and have been from the beginning, constantly say, oh, look, in the United States you have impeachment, in Europe there is impeachment. Um, this is a constitutional means of removing a president. But the big difference is that in the United States, if you impeach the president, if you had impeached Bill Clinton in 1997 or 1998, Al Gore would have become president, the Democratic Party would have continued to remain in power, and the agenda and ideology that the American people ratified would have been the same. In Brazil, it's exactly the opposite. The vice president, who has now become the interim president, who's about to become the president, is not part of the Workers' Party. He's part of this centrist party and has aligned himself with this right-wing party, the PSDB, um, that has continuously lost at the ballot box. Their candidates have been rejected. And yet, as a result of this impeachment process, the very party and the very ideology that the Brazilian people have over and over rejected when asked to vote, when asked to consider their candidates, is now ascending to power. And their agenda of privatization and cutting social programs and keeping taxes low to benefit the oligarchs is now gradually being imposed, as is their foreign policy of moving away from BRICS and regional alliances and becoming, once again, extremely subservient to the United States and to Wall Street and to international capital. And so you can call it a coup. You can debate whether that, that, that word applies. But what it is is a complete reversal of democracy um, in a way that is ushering in an agenda that benefits a small number of people that the Brazilian citizens have never accepted and, in fact, have continuously rejected. And the